So here we're going to look at a question that you may not have thought of, that is how is light produced? I'm sure you've all seen a rainbow. Um, do you know why the colors are organized the way they are, or do you know even what generates the colors? Hopefully this lecture will help explain a little bit of that. So starting first with just what is light? Light does not require a medium like sound to travel in. So sound requires air to be able to travel through, and the air pressure differences are perceived by your eardrum. The speed of light, represented by the letter C, famous in the equals mc squared equation, is about, you could say, roughly 300 million meters per second in a vacuum, or that's about 670.6 .6 million miles per hour. And of light, we can only see what's called the visible spectrum, and we'll look at that a little bit. To put this into perspective, the speed of light from the Earth to Moon is represented here. This is a scale model of the Earth and the Moon, with a beam of light traveling between them at, at the speed of light. It takes practically 1.6 seconds for that beam of light to leave Earth and go to the moon. We all know what a great distance uh, that is. So wavelength. We look at um, light, we consider wavelengths. So wavelengths defined as the distance between two crests or two troughs. So we see here's a crest, here's a crest. This would be considered the wavelength. Here's a trough, here's a trough. Here it's shown here as a wavelength. It's measured in nanometers, N, uh, M. And different wavelengths equal different colors. And to put this into perspective, when we're talking about nanometers, the human hair, or a single human hair, is about 100,000 nanometers. We're looking here on nanometers in the 400 to 700 range, just to give you an idea. And we look at the white light passing through this prism, we can see the different wavelengths. We see the red wavelengths on top here having a much longer wavelength. And then we see down, we get to the, the violets and the blues having a shorter wavelength. Now I said that we can only see the visible spectrum. So what is that spectrum? That visible spectrum is this very small portion of this entire electromagnetic spectrum. So we can see long radio waves, we have microwaves, infrared rays, and then we're getting smaller and smaller in wavelengths. You can see here x-rays, gamma rays, very uh, damaging, very penetrating. Uh, but our visible light is only this very, very small portion here, and it's expanded in this region here. You can see 700 nanometers to about 400 nanometers is the spectrum, or the portion that we can see. Even though radio waves are going through, we can't see those. Um, microwaves, infrared, UV light, we can't see that. We can only see this very small portion, what we call the visible spectrum. So putting this into perspective, moving energy levels. So we're looking at the atom again and our energy levels. In order for an electron to move energy levels, it either needs to gain or give off energy. Remember, we can't create or destroy energy. It has to only be transferred. The ground state is the lowest energy level and it's located closest to the nucleus. So in our example here, this would be the ground state here. This is our ground state. And these energy levels would represent um, different levels of excited states and increasing energy as we get further away from the nucleus. So absorbing energy. Electrons can gain energy from heat, electricity, or even other um, light sources. When an electron gains energy, it jumps up in energy levels. We see that here. Here's an electron gaining energy, jumping up in energy level. An electron that has gained energy will enter what we call the excited state. It's been jumped up a level. Or what kind of electrons can't exist in between. They can only exist at different energy levels. So here we're gaining uh, energy, jumping up in energy level. We really don't visually see anything happen when this occurs, but that electron now is what we call in the excited state. Moving on, when we, the electron releases energy, uh, the energy will be released as it jumps down a level as a photon, as it falls down closer to the ground state. The further the electron is from the nucleus, the more energy it has. We'll see that example here where that same electron is now losing energy. It's losing the same amount of energy. But here it's giving off as a photon of light, which we can see. So let's kind of put that in a, kind of a motion here. We see an electron here giving off energy that we can see jumping down in energy level. The electron gains energy. It jumps up. Now we can see it's moving a little bit quicker. The same thing here. It's gaining energy. It's what's called the excited state. And when it loses that energy, giving off a photon of light, clear down here, it's dropping to the ground state. So that photon of light, each photon matches a distinctive energy level jump with a specific wavelength emitted. So here's our before atom in the excited state, 
during or lose, dropping down that energy level, getting off that photon of light, and depending on what energy level or what energy levels it may jump will depend on the wavelength of light given off. So let's put that into an example. Here we have an electron at the third energy level. We're going to drop down to that second energy level. When it drops down to that one level there, it emits a red wavelength, which is 656 nanometers. Now let's take an electron at the fourth energy level and drop it down to the second energy level here. And we see that will give off 486 nanometers, this kind of greenish color. And for at the fifth energy level, we drop that down, we see 434 nanometers, that purple spectrum. Now let's make an assumption here for at the sixth energy level and drop down, we're going to be in this range here. So we see there's these different changes in wavelength. And sure enough, if we're at the sixth energy level and we drop down, we develop more of this purple at 410 nanometers. So you can see the different colors are produced, and depending on how the electrons are jumping around, these, these different colors will blend together to a single color that we'll perceive. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of a better idea of how light is produced.